Hey, welcome back. Time for five more DM D&D quick tips. And these are the tips that I have learned playing and running games over the last 40 years. Now, this is the third video of an ongoing series of tips, and I'll go ahead and link the full playlist in the description down below. Now, my tips are geared towards the advanced Dungeons and Dragons, but most of them should be useful no matter which version that you play. So let's get into it. Tip number one. Now, my first tip is that creating a good adventure on the fly is not actually all that hard. But, and this is an important but, creating a great adventure on the fly takes a lot of preparation and planning. So what do I mean by this? Well, simply put, anybody with a bit of storytelling skills, and they can probably keep a group going for a session. You throw in a couple of combats when you get stuck talk to a couple of NPCs, wham, the game is over, and everybody is telling you how great it was. Even if it wasn't. Even if it sucked and people were on their phones or playing a side card game like Magic or something when it wasn't their combat turn. But what can turn a fun but mediocre session into a great session is just to be ready with some options. Now, I don't mean you have to overplan over prepare, but have the monsters that you would expect them to encounter prepared and ready to run, but this is even more important, have your major plot points worked out. Know what's going to happen if the players do the quest, or if they just sit at the tavern drinking ale, and there's going to be a consequence either way. So kind of know what that is, and if they don't really follow the major plot points, let them know what happened because they didn't, that they went on some other direction and didn't want to really go in, in the direction of the storyline. That's fine. Side quests are great, but something may have happened that would directly impact the story and just let them know what it was. Not in a punishing way, not in a way that says, oh, you didn't follow my railroad, so this is what's going to happen. No, it's just simply, this is the facts. You went on and, and did this, which is fine. Great, but the dragon attacked the town while you were out, or whatever it, it, it was. So just make, have your major plot points in advance, ready to go. You're not punitive, it's not punishing, it's just reality and how things work. And it also helps you know how your major NPCs are going to react, because you know what their motivations are. But like I said, don't waste time over-preparing. You know, after a while, you're going to get the feel for what works for you. Tip number two. The first tip is great in theory and all, but there is a second part to it, and that is despite your planning, despite having a map ready to go with the monsters and the NPCs and your plot points and everything sketched out for the session, random tables all ready to go. Pre-approve all your random tables, by the way. The session still might suck. Now, if it sucks once or twice, yeah, it's not a big deal. Everybody has off days, everybody has off weeks, but... If it sucks consistently, you know, maybe it is time for some self-care. Take a bit of a break. Play a different game for a few sessions. You know, Monopoly, Clue, Risk. Have a movie night. Have a picnic. I mean, if you can get together with your group and do some off or real reality type thing, great. Now, hopefully the activities will feel everybody feeling refreshed and willing to get right back into it. So what do you do when you just aren't feeling like playing or running the game? I mean, for myself, I like to try new things and experiment, even if the players don't realize. And this would be tip number three, by the way. I typically change any published module I run, and then I react what the PCs have done. Or just change the parts I find boring while reading through it. If I kind of read through it and don't remember what I just read... I must have been either a really super tired or really super bored. Uh, sometimes I insert my own stuff. Sometimes I insert stuff from other modules. And this just keeps it interesting, both for me and in, I hope, most cases, my players. Now, if you kind of incorporate backstory stuff in there and things that they've done, that really helps, too. Uh, it does take a lot of effort and a lot of time, though. But... Just be aware, though, especially if you start doing this and modifying things, you're going to find special players, call them special, they carefully read the module before they play it, then they get upset when things are changed. Now, thankfully, I haven't had to deal with them much, and be honest, if I do encounter them, I don't invite them back. You know, 
or I, I might talk to them first and say, you know, this is re really isn't a game where you would read it first and then know exactly what to all go do. It, you know, this isn't like a walkthrough. We're not doing a video game. But if they were insistent upon doing it, I just I wouldn't invite them back. And you know what? You're the DM, and there's a heck of a lot of players out there who would be more than willing to take that player's spot. So I've never had a problem finding players when I was looking for them. Uh, tip number four. If you're a new DM, and not really new to the game, but new to running the game, don't be embarrassed or afraid to make mistakes with the players. Uh, and if you do, you know, some modifications and it's not working, don't be afraid to walk that back slightly. Obviously, you don't want to kill the immersion, but you see something's just not working, you know, kind of just re change course and don't be afraid to change course. Now, if you're a seasoned DM, you know, I say the same thing. New, seasoned, whatever. Everybody makes mistakes. Not a big deal if you mess something up. Uh, you have a few choices. You can always just fix it. You can walk it back. Uh, you can fix it. That can be done during the game, right then and there. After the game, especially if it's a major plot point. But, you know, don't be afraid to incorporate that. Maybe that what seems to be like a really bad move right there, maybe you can incorporate that somehow and, and, and bring that into the overall arching plot, those major plot points, and just have it uh, help you out maybe. So, and I guess along with that is don't be afraid to change a ruling, but don't be afraid to stick to your decisions either, okay? If someone has a good reason... Like I kind of said in the last game, someone pulls you aside and says, hey, I don't like this ruling because of X, Y, and Z. You know, you can change your mind. It's okay. No one's going to think any less of you. But in fact, they might think more of you. But at the same time, if you have a good reason and you want to stick with it, and you might just say to the person, you know, I can't tell you exactly why, but there's some plot points as to why that was Said like that, the big bad evil guy did something off screen, you don't know what it was, and that's the reason for the for, for the ruling, and you don't want to give too many spoilers, you know, you can, but just talk to people. Um, and that kind of goes with tip number five, is that's developing your, your game master philosophy. Now, this is the philosophy by which you run your games, and I've heard of somebody uh, saying as simple as, always say yes, but... Or warn the players, but let them fail forward, which is kind of the same thing. The players can do whatever they want, but there are consequences. And it kind of in the second one is the players can do whatever they want, and no matter what they do, they'll still achieve some measure of success. I kind of probably am in the middle there. I'm not going to say you can do whatever you want, but you'll always be dead, and I'm not going to say you can do what you want, and you're always going to succeed. My personal philosophy is that I personally will make mistakes, and um, I'm going to I know I'm going to over and under prepare for games, uh, both, and I've done it many, many times where it's like, oh shoot, I haven't really prepared much, we'll just do a monster of the week, uh, try to tie it into the plot point later, which that doesn't work well, but hey, we're all, I'm guilty of doing it. So, but try to involve the players, though, and let them tell the story of their characters. So, yes, they can do whatever they want, but there are consequences to what they do. The consequences might be good. The consequences might be bad. But there are always going to be consequences to what they do. So, so at sometimes, you know, I might actually accidentally, probably, run a great game. Uh, probably I will stick mostly to running good games, but... I striving for those great games. And, you know, a little bonus tip for running a game is to keep the players guessing. In combat, you know, and I've said this before, keep them guessing, change them up a little bit. Release things like zombies and waves. You know, some of the later editions, and I kind of like this, that have the, that minion, that one hit point minion, but don't have all the one hit point minions right there, have them come in waves. So that when they think they've defeated that herd, and they're licking the, their wounds, then along comes another batch of zombies. If you watch, like, The Walking Dead or something like that, that happens in there a lot. They'll be like, oh gosh, we got the big, bad zombies defeated, then all of a sudden they turn around and there's another coming, so... Anyway, thanks for taking a look. What quick tips would you add? Uh, please let me know down in the comments below. Otherwise, catch you next time. Bye!
Hey, thanks for watching the video. Please give a like, share, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. Catch you next time. Bye.